Hello, Rick here with a video on how the talkie talk works in space. In Star Trek, the time dilation issues posed by travelling at the speed of light are averted through the inclusion of the jargoned around phenomena of subspace. Any communication signal sent through space is going to take a measurable amount of time to transmit, even when broadcasting to our nearest celestial body from Earth. The delay is 1.25 seconds, which does not seem like much, but as anyone who has taken part in a joint video call can attest, even a half second delay requires some awareness and practice to work around. By the time we are reaching the planets, delay times are already into the minutes, which makes real time conversation impossible, and by the time of Pluto we're looking at around 5 hours, let alone the years it would take for a message to be received by our nearest star. But with the discovery and utilisation of subspace to produce warp fields, so too came the answers to faster than light communications. A subspace transmitter, whether shipboard, a planet, or as a relay station, consumes about 100 times the power a sublight communication would, but are able to push packets of information into subspace where they are no longer bound by relativistic velocity. Just as a ship can travel at warp speeds in a warp bubble, the communication signals can pass through subspace to reach their destination, and at much faster intervals than a ship can travel. We see multiple times in the shows that the comm range is established far before a vessel, even one travelling at maximum warp, can get there showing that the speed of subspace communications is much higher than attainable warp factors by roughly a factor of 60. Well, that figure is as variable as the plot needs it to be though, but another scale suggests that subspace comms travelled at approximately warp 9.9995. The Federation has a wide network of satellites, stations and groundside relays that bolster and bounce communications all across the UFP space ensuring that most colonies and ships are never out of contact with one another. New colonies, however, might require some time to set up receivers and communication towers, and starships on the front line of unexplored space often have to deploy their own subspace boosters in their wake to relay information back to Starfleet HQ. In addition, most subspace turbulence and energies can cause all sorts of interference, as can certain radiations and gravitational anomalies too can adversely affect the subspace carrier waves of communication in the same way that they distort warp bubbles. But likewise this can be compensated for to a limited degree. Between vessels meeting within sight of one another however, such FTL communications are not always needed, but are often used anyway for the increase in quality it brings over the traditional communications. Nevertheless, most ships carry both subspace communications and older systems to pick up a variety of EM waves. When communicating, there are numerous protocols and security measures in place to ensure that a signal between two sources is not harmful. It is a common tactic to simply beam a virus or some other nefarious program to a ship, and these security measures are there to prevent bad outcomes from such attempts at cyber warfare. The same system, however, is responsible for greeting unfamiliar communications, and works in tandem with the Universal Translator system to establish a method of communicating in such a scenario like first contact. This is where the strength of a ship's computer comes into play, as it can formulate and try different outcomes to try to establish communications link as technology varies between spacefaring cultures, even if they have made the same developmental breakthroughs. This is also used to explain away the Fermi paradox in Star Trek, or at least the reason why no advanced cultures were detected by Earth for so long. Subspace signals are generally undetectable by 21st century technology, so all FTL methods of communication that relied on it, basically all of them, could sail right through the solar system without a blip on any telescope. In non-canon tales, some species, such as the Trill, developed first contact through uncovering subspace communications before warp drive, and tuning into the subspace domain to uncover a flurry of information and signals previously hidden in the depths of that formerly undetectable realm. 
subspace telescopes and listening outposts, all operated on a similar principle to comm arrays, but are of course tailored to their specific role. There is also the mention that whenever a Federation starship makes contact with a comm relay or an installation such as a starbase, an automatic process is triggered, where the starship transmits its logs and status to the starbase, to keep a record of its journeys and current whereabouts, leaving a trail should the vessel need to be tracked down again, as well as up-to-date information that is eventually transmitted back to Starfleet HQ. This is how the official logs from the crew are accessible to all. Likewise, the starbases are updated with regular bursts of information from the UFP, such as news, mission orders, databases and other non-classified data. After receiving a starship's logs and updates, the starbase then transmits the latest information it has back to the vessel, ensuring that all Starfleet ships have access to the same information. Priority missions, info and orders are of course transmitted separately and do not idle in the databases of Federation comm stations. Many transmissions are encrypted and scrambled or buried so deep in subspace that you would not overhear them unless you knew where to look. It's a constant evolution of automated protocols, ciphers and decryption that is at play to protect sensitive information. There was a brief experimentation with holographic communications in real time in the 23rd century. However, these systems were not as efficient as they would later become and, in the case of the Enterprise at least, were actually faulty enough to warrant their entire removal. Eventually, the technology was reintroduced in the late 24th century with far better clarity and more efficient methods to it. One assumes that such holographic images would also demand more bandwidth than a standard communication over view screens or audio logs. That about covers how faster than light communications work in Star Trek, at least the subspace variety. Thank you for watching this particular subspace broadcast. I've been Rick and I'll see you next time for another lore drop, and until then, goodbye.